My name is Miguel Rosas, Wall Educator, and today I'm going to show you how to do a pixie cut. So today we're going to be doing a pixie cut. And I'm examining the client's hair so that I can in fact see exactly where I want to start and how low I want to take the fade. So what I'm going to do is start off with my one and a half by removing the bolt. And I have my lever open. So right now we're going to go straight up. And as we get to the primal ridge, just kind of bring the clipper away and go straight up toward the ceiling so that you can create a blend right from the start. As you can see, the hair actually is blending in right here. And that is because I am not C-scooping back too hard. So I'll show you an example right here. What happens if you C-scoop? So if you C-scoop too much, all you're getting right here is a weight line. So instead of C-scooping, we're gonna go straight up toward the ceiling. And what you're seeing is the hair being blended. If you can get this trick right here down, you're gonna make your job so much easier. So right here, I wanna stay nice and low underneath the occipital bone. So using my one and a half with my tapered lever opened, we're gonna go right in here and we are gonna gradually see scoop out right at the bottom of that, right at the bottom of the occipital bone. Again, I like to gradually see scoop out because if you do too harsh of a C scoop, then you're gonna create a lot of weight. The clipper that I'm using today is a cordless wall magic clip. This clipper has a lithium ion battery in it, has a runtime of 90 minutes, and a lithium ion battery, the cool thing about those is that you cannot overcharge them. And as you notice, as I get to the side of the head, I gotta make sure that my blend starts to contour with the side of the head. So I'm gonna make sure that my blade, instead of going straight up, since we were on the back of the head, now I have to turn it sideways and go more at that angle there. So again, with my one and a half guard on the clipper, we're just going straight up. And as we get toward the bridal ridge, just kind of go up toward the ceiling. So down here, I have the clipper laid flat against the scalp. Well, again, when I get right up by the parietal ridge, we're gonna kind of angle that backwards and let this longer hair right up in here fall right down into that blade. So I'm not going into the hair and I'm not C-scooping outwards. I'm just going straight up. So you can see right in here where we have too much weight line. I'm gonna get a lot of this down in here blended, but I wanna leave a lot of this hair up in here long so that it falls, so that we have some, some movement on it later on when we go to style it. So I'm gonna put the comb in nice and flat right in here, and using the blade angle against the comb, we're just gonna cut upwards to remove some of that bulkiness down below that's creating that weight line. So you can kind of see how that's now starting to blend in.
And as you can tell also, we have the, the fade kind of dropping down into the back. I like to have my blends dropping down because later on, if I want to, I can bring them up higher. But if you take it too high in the back, well, you can't put the hair back and now you're kind of just, you know, stuck with the higher fade. So for some of you who have a little bit more trouble with blending and, and doing like fades and stuff like that, always stay a little lower in the back because you can always take it up higher if you have to. So now we're gonna go ahead and blend in some of the hair right around the occipital bone area. So pay real close attention to the way I clip or overcomb this. I'm gonna lift the hair up and I'm gonna use my blade going across the comb at an angle. See how I'm going right across? Lifting the hair up, but we don't wanna to eliminate too much of this weight right in here. We still want the hair, we still want the hairstyle to look feminine. So that's why some of that weight is important. So you can tell right in here how that's starting to get a lot softer and a little more blended in. Right in here, you can really see a lot of the weight right here. So I'm gonna place my comb nice and flat and just kind of brush right over the hair sticking out little bits at a time. If you're unsure of how much hair to cut away, just allow a little bit of hair to come through the comb at a time because you can always go back and remove more later. I have my teeth going across the comb at about a 45 degree angle with the, with the taper blade all the way open. So just, remove, just remember that we're, we're going to create a nice little blend below, but we want to keep some of the weight up above. Okay. Let's go ahead and start on the left side of the head. So because of how I previously used my one and a half guard when I was going up toward the ceiling, you can already tell how the hair is pretty blended in. We only have a little bit of stuff right down below to blend in and a tiny bit of this weight line up in here. But again, I stress to leave that weight line because that is what's gonna give us that feminine look. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna point the sideburn and you have to know the difference between pointing you know, the sideburn on a, on a woman versus pointing the sideburn on a man. A lot of the times when we're pointing sideburns on a man, we follow the line going straight down and then we'll start from back in here and kind of curve upwards. Where in this situation, instead of going straight down, we're actually gonna cut right through, right in there. And I'm just kind of using the corner of my blade to create that arch back and going toward the ear. And so here, I'm gonna lay my finger down on the face to stabilize my hand. And just slowly follow up toward the little hairs right in here. So you can kind of see right in here where the hair is, it's a little lighter in here and a little lighter in here. So this about will be the area in which we take the V. So starting right here on the left, lay your blade nice and flat. What I like to do so that I don't irritate the neck area though, 
instead of going directly in at a 90 degree angle, if you angle your blade backwards a little bit, you actually have a higher chance of not irritating the skin. So now we're gonna start right here on the right side. Angle your blade backwards. A lot of the times when we're cutting on the neck, a lot of people will tend to dig in this way and scrape downwards, and that's what causes a lot of irritation. So rather than doing that, angle your blade upwards. You're still gonna be able to create a nice line without creating any irritation. And for everybody watching right now, the tool that I'm using is a Wall Detailer LI. This cordless trimmer has 100 minutes of runtime, and it has a lithium ion battery. So when you're not using it, what you do is you just set it in the docking station. Just like that. And when you're not using it, it charges. Next, we're going to create a blend right in here. Some people refer to that as a burst fade, and it may even give a little bit of a, of a kind of a mohawkish look on the haircut. So now we're gonna create a nice little blend right above the ear area. And for some of you, this is called a burst fade. Others may refer to it almost as a mohawk. Um, so right here, we're gonna start off, usually a lot of people, actually well, a lot of people start off first with like the detailer or with your tremors. What I'm gonna start off with though, it's just my cordless magic clip with the taper, uh, taper lever all the way open. We'll move on to the next step. And you don't have to go too high up because we don't, the blend doesn't have to be huge. Just a small little blend right in here gives it a cool little effect. And your half circle doesn't have to be completely perfect either. our half guard or some refer to it as a 16th and with the taper lever all the way opened we're gonna go about maybe a quarter of an inch up past that line to blend that out using the corner of my blade going about a half an inch or not a half an inch a quarter of an inch on the outside of that half circle So now you can kind of see that starting to blend in right there. So now I'm going to use my one guard. Again, I'm just using the corner of the blade. Notice that since we did have a half a circle, I have to blend around this at the edge of where that original guideline was at. So the blend should be going away from that focal point that we created when we first created the half circle. Just use a lot of my, uh, I just use a lot of the corner of the blade. It's just really hard to get your whole blade in there. Plus, if you put the whole blade in there, you may add a line. So it's just much easier to make sure that you don't add a line by just using the corner of the blade. So now I see some, some little choppy spots in there, some little lines of demarcation. I'm gonna put my, my half guard back on now to really polish this up. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and, and just kind of go through and use the corner of my blade to kind of soften up some of these darker spots that I see in here. So we're just kind of going through right now. We're just kind of picking apart any little dark spots we see and just kind of lightening up those spots so that our blend just comes together that much better. See a couple of little darker areas right up in here. So we can just put our comb in there, kind of do some clipper over comb with the guard on. Again, we like the heavier weight line up in here though, because then we have some movement to that later on when it comes to styling it. So next we're gonna use our detailer and we're not gonna take it very high. We're just gonna remove some of the hair right into here using the corner of the blade. And this is really gonna add a really nice blend to this. What it's gonna kinda of add is like, uh, it's an effect called gradients. And I want to say that's why they, they call this this blend or this kind of haircut a burst fade because the blend starts right here in the middle and it kind of spreads outwards. It kind of bursts outwards. So right now, I mean, we're to the point where we've done we've done quite a few different techniques. Don't hesitate to uh, comment below or ask any questions. I'll be, on, I'll be on during the video to answer any of your questions, so don't hesitate to ask anything. Also, I do wanna let you know that I am gonna be having a giveaway. So for whoever tags and shares this page and this video, well, whoever tags and shares the most people in this video, will win a cordless wall detailer and a wall t-shirt. Again, all you have to do is share and tag the video. Whoever shares and tags the video the most will win a wall detailer LI and a wall t-shirt. So here I'm just kind of using the corner of my blade just to blend out that area. So I'm just going to kind of I'm just right now doing some raking with the with the uh, with the clippers. Raking is a technique that is referred to when you have your blade pointing toward the scalp like this and you're raking it upwards. I use a lot of raking. Um, the reason why I rake is because when you lay it flat, that's going to cut the hair really short, close to the scalp. Where when I rake, all I, what what it's doing for me is just saving me time from having to put another guard on. So now we're going to create a really cool effect on the side of the head. We're going to put a little bit of a blend right in here. So we're going to start off with a half circle, and the half circle doesn't have to go too high up. That way it gives us plenty of room to blend outwards. This is what creates that effect that some call a burst fade. So just using the corner of my blade, we're gonna, use, we're gonna create the half circle. And my blade is, my taper lever is all the way open. Okay, so you can see that right in there. Don't have to go very high. Now I'm going to attach my half guard, some call it the 16th. Now I got the taper lever all the way open there, and we're going to use the corner of the blade to blend that line out. For some of you who may have just chimed in, once this video is done, you can go back and you can re-watch the video. Right now it's going to be live, but later on you can go back and you can rewind so that if you missed anything, you know, you have the opportunity to 
you know, to catch up on what, what it is that I've done so far. Please leave a comment, please leave some likes, share, tag some friends. And, and I do have a giveaway going on today for whoever shares and tags this video the most will win a cordless detailer LI and a wall t-shirt. So please tag your friends and share this video as much as you can. So you can see how the blend is now coming together really nicely. Just using the corner of our blade, maybe just going about a quarter of an inch past that first guideline that I made using the wall, or actually I used I use the, the wall magic clip here. So now I'm gonna use my one with the taper lever all the way closed and we're just gonna barely go up past that now. Just using the corner of that blade. And I'm gonna open it up a little bit. Just cause I noticed I felt like it may have taken, it, it, it could have possibly taken off too much hair. So with the, I think it'd be better with the taper lever open rather than closed. And if you notice, I'm having to kind of cut around it. So originally we put a half circle in. So when you're blending, you have to continue to go around that half circle. And you don't want to go too high up into this. It's more of a blend that stays down low. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to use the wall detailer LI. And all I really want to do is just eliminate the line that I created down here, the natural hairline right in here. We just want to eliminate that. So we don't need to go too high. So just using the corner of the blade, just kind of going up, removing that line. And you only need to remove it right in this area here. Just using the corner of your blade is real important because if you try to put the whole blade in there, you're going to create a really long line going straight across. Just use a corner of the blade. We almost don't really have to do much to it after this. It almost looks like it's already blended in. So I got the, uh, the taper lever opened and we're just going to go right into that area where I just left off with the detailer. Just to blend that just a little bit more. But look at that effect that we create here. So when you're looking, standing in the front, you got this darker outline here of the sideburn. And then as it's going toward the middle of the head, it gets lighter and lighter, lighter right in here. And then it gets darker as you go down. So it's a really cool effect to create on a pixie cut. So it's just real important to know the differences as far as how much to fade on a pixie cut versus a masculine fade. Weight line really helps to keep a pixie cut more feminine. And that's the reason why you can kind of see a little bit of this weight line in here and the hair up in here isn't so short so that we can create movement and have a little bit more hair left over for styling later on. So you have to really make sure that when you're doing a pixie cut, that you know about things like that, so that way, when you're done with the haircut, it does remain more feminine than it does masculine. I notice the other side's a little shorter right in here, so I'm just gonna take this down just a tiny bit to make sure our sides match up. One back on and just right in here let's just go ahead and go up just a tad bit right up in here using the corner of our blade it's real important to use the corner of your blade rather than putting it all the way straight and going up you're gonna have a much more higher chance of blending the hair so much better if you just use the corner of that blade versus putting the whole blade in there and going like that
I hope you so far like what you've seen. I hope this can make your job easier from here on out. If you have any questions about our tools, don't hesitate to ask. One thing I do want to throw out there is this. We do have a Wall Academy online. It is through Wall Academy at wallpro.skilljar.com. A lot of the videos that we've been sharing lately will be reposted on this. There's a lot of other information about tools. So go ahead and check out this. Go online. It's called the Wall Academy Online. It is available in English and Spanish. So what we need to do is we need to add a lot of texture because that is what differentiates a pixie cut from a regular fade. Now what I'm going to use today is a Sterling Big Mag. The Sterling Big Mag has 90 minutes of runtime with a lithium ion battery. And what's really cool about this, it has a detachable blade. This right here is your standard blade for cutting bluntly. And it also comes with an all-in-one blade. We're going to use the all-in-one blade to really texturize the top of the hair. First, we're going to remove a little bit of the bulk and some of the ends with my standard blade on. See how it nicely just cuts that hair away? We want to make sure not to go too much down into the bang area because that's really what's giving us that nice sassiness, that nice flow to the front of the head. Right now we're just kind of cutting the ends and then I'm going to go back in with my all-in-one blade to really add a lot of texture. Now you can do, you can actually add texture with this as well and you can point cut with it by lifting the hair up and just kind of point cutting right down into it just like that. So you can kind of see all that going on right there. What this does is just add a lot of texture without cutting too much hair away. And since I'm going from underneath the hair, this is going to add a lot of volume. So you can see the hair being removed, but if you look, it's not chunking it too much out. It's not taking too much off. So we'll not leave holes in the hair or anything like that. But do a little bit right here in the bang area as well. So you can kind of just tell, you know, from the top of the hair, after I use my wall big mag, there's a lot of texture going on. And that is really important when doing pixie cuts. And that's also why I kept stressing throughout this haircut, why it's important also to leave that weight line, because the weight line is gonna actually blend in once you style the hair. When you have too much of a weight line going on, that's when the haircut looks a little too masculine. So I really hope that everybody got a lot of useful tips out of the different techniques I showed you today and this hairstyle and why it's important to know the differences 